Kubernetes. I can see terror in your eyes when you hear that name, when you see that logo. We all have that feeling. As software developers in 2019, our skill sets must cover a lot of ground. Hello everyone, this is Rayed and welcome to this episode of my vlog about software engineering in 2019. You have no idea how many times I pretended like I knew what I was talking about, especially in the DevOps area, but actually I had no clue. That's what I want to talk about today, DevOps. For those of you coding in PHP back in the days, you probably remember when you had a shared hosting and you uploaded your PHP files through FTP. Well, Amazon came and broke your heart. All hail to King Cloud Computing. Deploying an app in 2019 requires a whole new set of skills. We are expected to know how to deploy an app in a public cloud. And with that, a whole field of solutions started to spawn. You probably already heard about Heroku. Heroku is the easiest solution available in the market. With one command line, Heroku deploys your app and does all the heavy lifting for you. So you can go back to your project. However, if you scale your app or you need access to memory storage, you need to turn it down a notch. I discovered the limit of Heroku when I was building an app that needed to take screenshots. Although I wanted to upload those screenshots to an Amazon S3 bucket, it was not possible for Heroku to store for a couple of milliseconds the screenshots I wanted. That's why I moved to DigitalOcean. It's a service that allows you to spin off a virtual machine using a graphical user interface. Although the setup is easy, it requires a little bit of work in order to set up the reverse proxy, such as Nginx or Apache. At this point, most of your side projects will be covered either by Heroku or by DigitalOcean. This is where Docker comes in. Docker builds images that helps you standardize the whole environment, both for your local machine and when you deploy. On a small individual project, this might not be necessary. However, when you work in an organization where multiple developers collaborate on a code base, most likely they will not share the absolute same operating system, programming language version, and so many other parameters that could make differences between their code and the production environment. What would happen then is uh, a developer would write its code base, it would work perfectly on his machine, but when he deploys, it would create a new bug, a behavior that is not expected. Docker allows team to smooth things out and make sure everyone works in the same environment so there would be no surprises. This environment that Docker creates is called a container. An app could be divided into multiple containers. This is often where we see microservices come in. For the moment, that's all you need to understand about Docker. It is easy to try on a small project and I would encourage you to do so if you haven't already tried. Now, this is where the big boy comes in. In a corporate environment, most likely apps are going to run in multiple containers. The server itself might be structured into multiple services, each one in its own container. The database has its own and same goes for any third party apps that could be used in this project such as Elasticsearch. Kubernetes is what we call an orchestrator. It helps coordinate the deployment of each containers and make them work together. To be honest, I have no idea how, of how it works under the hood, but I know it is used more and more. And as a developer, we have to know at least what it is and how to use it. If you think the DevOps is overwhelming, damn, you're right. My advice to you is for each step we describe in this video, try to make a deployment. If you never deployed an app on Heroku, go ahead, create an account and deploy your first Hello World app. Same goes for DigitalOcean. Once you've done that, try to do it in a Docker container. I believe DevOps is a skill that will drive up any software developer's career. Having knowledge about this topic could be the difference maker. And finally, do not wait to start learning DevOps. This is a skill that should be learned in the meantime as your software development skills. You do not need to wait to master Node.js, Java, React, or whatever. You need to learn this right now. Matter of fact, this is the topic number one I am studying and practicing right now. If you guys like the video, I would be very grateful if you could click the like button down there. Also, tag your friends if you think there's value for them as well. It would be very much appreciated. Till next time, folks, stay hungry.